Welcome back. Everyone. Dr. Perry Bush is back with us from Bluffton University. We're continuing our discussion about the situation in Ukraine. You brought up a very good point. You used to live downriver from this power plant that's under Russian control right now. We know rockets are going back and forth. We know Ukrainians are, are trapped inside, basically, under gunpoint from Russians. Kind of give us a sense, if you could, the magnitude of, of we don't want to get too doom and gloom, but what could happen if, if things go south here? Jeff, it's a pretty scary situation, not just for the people living around the plant. I mean, I lived in Zaporizhia, which is a city of 800,000 people just north of the plant on the Dnipro River. But, you know, if the thing melts down, I mean, clouds of radioactive uh, material could be belched in the air from this, you know, uh, melting down reactor. And depending on the winds, it could blow into uh, Eastern Europe, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, or even Western Europe, or it could go the other way into Russia. And like, no one wants this to happen. Now, you know, the New York Times has had some interesting reporting on this recently. It's fascinating. It's kind of on the one hand, on the other kind of thing, right? On the one hand, this is a relatively new plant. It's the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. It's relatively new. Uh, it was built, I think, came online in 1994. So it's like 30 years old. Um, and it was built with all these safety features in mind. And after 9-11, it was restructured even to withstand uh, the hit of a, of a of an airplane you can imagine after 9 11 right so these are these are really structurally reinforced reactors so the danger isn't so much that they're exploding and um but it's it's the danger that that the electrical system might melt down right um these plants were built to withstand you know earthquakes etc but they weren't stand weren't built to function in the midst of an active war zone i mean can they handle the uh, a cruise missile strike because that's what's happening. That's what's scary. This is a plant in the middle of an active war zone. Russians took the plant five months ago in March. Um, uh, Ukrainian troops are across the Dnipro River on the west bank of the Dnipro. There's shelling going on. Uh, and in fact, what you just like you just said, you've got a captive workforce. You know, you had actually 1.10 thousand workers in that plant. Now it's down to kind of a, a skeletal crew of a thousand workers held there under gunpoint. Uh, subject to detention and arrest. Uh, Ten have disappeared. A hundred have shown signs of being beaten or, or even tortured by Russian authorities. I mean, it's a pretty scary situation. The, again, the real danger is not so much the thing would explode, but um, uh, munitions might explode, burning up the electrical system, which would then prohibit coolant from coming into the plant. And that that's the real danger. What do you think Vladimir Putin thinks about this? Obviously, he's not been a, akin to being worried about public relations or how he looks in, in, the, in the spotlight. But this situation, is, as you said, if, if things go south, the electrical grid goes down and, and, and something bad really happens here, that, that doesn't look good for him either, does it? Well, no one wants a nuclear meltdown. Both sides are blaming the other for the explosions in the plant, right? Um, uh the United, United States has called for a demilitarized zone. The United Nations has called for a demilitarized zone, asked Russians to leave the plant. Um, Putin has said, no way, we're not going to do that. I got a friend uh, still living in Zaporizhia. Um, she's nervous, right? Um, and she says what, what their game, what the Russians' game is, they're building a, an electrical facility nearby. What they want to do is, in effect, reroute all that electricity you know, east or south, um, and it's just another part of their total war campaign against Ukraine to cut off. I mean, this nuclear plant produces lots of power that you know Ukraine needs. You cut that off; it's another way of, particularly as the winter comes, starving and freezing the Ukrainians into submission. Um, I think that's probably Putin's real game. No one wants nuclear meltdown, but again, we got a nuclear plant functioning in an active war zone. Who knows what can happen? As you said, rerouting that electric to a to a plant that they would run, it also kind of reinforces that he he wants to be there for the long run. This isn't go in, rough them up, and get out. This is basically take over, right? Well, he had hoped that the thing would be over by now. Um, you know, it's supposed to be over by Victory Day, May 9th. But we all know what happened. Russian troops did not take Kiev, and now they're advancing in the south, and they control about twenty percent of Ukraine. But they're not going anywhere. It's a long term war of attrition. We'll have to see what happens now. Does the West have the fortitude to stand up to this as, you know, the winter comes on in, in five months and Russian energy is, is, you know, Russia cuts off energy supplies to the West. And we'll see. I think that Putin's banking kind of on the long war and we'll see what happens. Yeah, you bring up a very good point because that was the fear that we the West would become desensitized to what's going on. Well, as you said, we'll see what happens. Dr. Bush, as always, we thank you. It's always good to be here with you, Jeff. Thank you. You bet. Nice chatting with you. We'll be back after this.